Hi Victor, I just wanted to make a rather short YouTube video to show you a project that I've been working on for a while. Uh, this project started at the end of my sabbatical. In 2015 I had a sabbatical to create apps for our three developmental math courses. Well, back then we had three, now we only have two, but it was uh, 067, 097, and uh, 034 back then. Um, and I created apps for them, but uh, since then I've decided that keeping up with apps and the programming and all the different changes that go on with operating systems is just kind of an impossible task. So instead of making this one an app, I created this one as just a website. So it's accessible to anybody. Uh, the website, I have it up here now, is a temporary one. I'm just going through some testing things. And so I have a temporary website, but it'll be available on our Courses 2 website uh, relatively soon after I do a little bit more testing. Um, but the basic idea is that this is just a tool to help people analyze uh, motion in videos, analyze the position of motion in videos, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. There's space up here to put your name, so I put my name up in here, and today's date, uh, you can edit this if you want to as well. But the next thing, and probably the most important, is that you can import a video into the website. And you can import the video from your local device. So if you click on here, it'll just open up your, you know, your little browser and you can find a video to put in there. Or you can import a video from YouTube. And the reason I found this helpful is that I have my own YouTube channel and that's a great way for me to organize the videos and uh, be able to access them from anywhere if there's an internet connection. So whether you're using your own device and you just took a video on your iPhone or iPad, or you're uh, importing a video from YouTube, this will handle both of those. So I'm gonna pick one from YouTube from right now, and I'm gonna pick this baseball toss. I'll just go through two examples of how I might use this in the classroom. But this is a baseball toss, and basically it's just a video of me tossing a baseball, right? So you can see the little baseball moving through here. Um, this is my living room. Uh, Welcome to my home. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, me just playing around, seeing what I can do with uh, this little new tool that I made. Um, and so what you're, this allows you to do is you can, you know, manipulate the video just like you would any video, but then you can click on a point on the video and it'll create a data point. And so you'll notice some stuff popped up over here on the right, and this is actually the, uh, the horizontal position and the vertical position and the time in the video that that point was created. Um, uh, X and Y are in pixels, uh, so it's counting pixels on the screen. Actually from this, uh, these are our axes here, so this is this green thing is our, our origin. Okay, uh, You can move the origin, so you can change the origin and it'll, if you keep an eye on our data point in the table, when I release the origin, it changes the data points, of course. So if I put it really close, it'll be close to zero, zero. And you know, if I pull that farther away, oops, I moved the point instead of moving the axes, so I can put that wherever I think is relevant, right? Uh, so that's nice. Uh, the time will never change. And as points are created in the video, they're always sorted by time in the table over here. So if I go in between those two points I just created, what you'll see is when I create this point, this third point, it's in between the other two. And this is an example of, you can kind of see that point is a little off center of the, uh, of the ball. So I can change that and manipulate that a little bit just by dragging it and putting it right there and it'll change it dynamically like that in the table. So I'm just gonna go through this video and create a few data points. I'm not being very careful, but uh, it doesn't have to be perfect for this little demonstration I'm doing here. Um, let's see, it looks like there's a big gap. So another way you can manipulate the video is you can skip to a specific time. So I've got a big gap between 1.2 and 2.4. So maybe I'll do a skip to time and I'll go to 1.8, about halfway in between those two. Then you see the balls right up here and I can create a point right there. So that's another way you can manipulate the video put your points in all the points you can move them around at any time um, and once you create a point in a specific time it sticks to that time so if now if I try to manipulate this data point out here what you'll see is the uh, image of the ball will be where this point is because it skips to that time in the video you can drop that back down there you can also change the color of the points you can make them black you can make them orange um, you can change the size of them the size is actually really helpful when you're dealing with a uh, 
with a smaller device like an iPhone, it's nice to make the, si the uh, size of the points really big so you can put your finger on the outside and still see where that little point is moving. And the color option is just because with different videos, it's easier to see different colors depending on the lighting in the background and the colors that are in the background. So I like my light blue, so I'll keep that and I'll make the points a little bit smaller because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on, but as big as you want, kind of as small as you want. So I've, I've created some data points here. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can select a scale. So if I select scale, what I can do is I know that this, uh, that this piece of wood up on our chimney there is exactly six feet long. So I can just change that to six feet and you'll notice when I click update table that it'll update all of the data points. So it was in pixels before and now it's taking the number of pixels that this is and if I say that that's six feet it's converting all of the lengths in for the data points into feet instead of um, pixels. Um, and you know you can then change that to anything you want. So if instead I want to be more precise and say that that's 72 inches no problem, I just update that and it says it's 72 inches. So you can kind of create a, a more real life depiction of what's going on with the correct units. Uh, given the fact that this is a little bit in the background in this one, right? It's not, a, it's not an exact science here. Um, in the future, I plan to get a uh, meter stick so that the meter stick can be in the same plane as the motion that's going on. And then that'll be a really good reference for people to be able to create a nice scale. Anyway, after you create a scale, you can go ahead and graph the data. And so below the video, you get three choices. You can either graph y versus x, our nice parabola in this case, x versus t, pretty good line, right? I wasn't being very careful, so they're not completely lined up. And then y versus t, another parabola. And the last thing that you can do is you can choose a regression, right? So I can do a linear regression, gives me the equation for the uh, linear regression line. This is x versus time, so it's, it's in that form. It's x versus t here. And you know this is a representation of the equation, and this is just the same equation, but written out with more decimal places, right? And it, and it calculates your r squared value for that regression. Um, and you can do that for any of them. So here's a nice quadratic regression. And again, just gives you the equation and shows you what that would look like, shows you how accurate it is. And of course, you also have your r squared for your accuracy as well. So you can do any kind of regression. I just included all the regressions that are available on the TI calculator, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, logarithmic, exponential, and sinusoidal. And so it will do all of those. I haven't found applications for all of them yet, but maybe you've got some good examples. Um, I'll just show you one more example. Um, if you, you can take a screenshot, I should mention that. So students, if they're working on this, they could take a screenshot of what they've been working on and they could print that off or they could save that as a file and send it to me. Um, and you can also clear everything. So if you want to start over, you made a big mistake, you can just clear it. And the same video that was there before that you already loaded in is still there. Um, I'm going to change to a different video to just show you one more example. I've got a bicycle wheel moving around. This is a uh, video of my wife's bike hanging in our garage. And you can see my hand over here turning the wheel. And you can see there's my, there's my hand on the pedal turning it. Um, I'm going to start a little bit back from that. Maybe start right about here. Oh, let me go back a little bit there. That's pretty good. And I'm going to say that the origin is the center of our bike. And I'll start making data points right here. Um, I'm just going to quickly go around. Maybe not quickly. I'm going to go as fast as I possibly can. So I'm not being accurate with my data points. So it'll be a, a little bit off when we come through just because I'm trying to save you some time. Actually, this is one of the most fun things for me. I just like moving through the video and creating data points. So I'm pressing this. This button just fast forwards the video 1% of the total length of the video. And in this case, that works out really well. And I also know, create my own scale here. I also know that my the diameter, the outer diameter of my wife's bike wheel here is 26 inches. So I can update that and now it's all in inches and I can graph that. And I just think it's a really cool example of a trig function, right? When you do x versus t, you got your nice sine curve. When you do y versus t, you got your nice sine curve. And you can do a sinusoidal regression. So if I do sinusoidal, the only thing you have to do is guess a uh, pretty good um, 
estimation of the period. So this is at 8.16, this point's at 17.2, so it's about nine. So if I put nine in, it does a pretty good um, regression line for that. And of course, the same thing should be true for y versus t. It should be about nine as well. And you get a pretty good curve. I imagine using this in the classroom in three different ways. One way is just doing exactly what I just did, doing demonstrations and showing students how things are related. Like, I think this would be a great introduction for graphing sine functions, right? This is why we graph them. This is the whole idea. Here's x versus t, and that could be your cosine wave, and this could be your sine wave, and to show them all that. Um, but also, you could use it for um, a real life example of you know, what's the period of this function? In this case, you can see that y, the period, you know, our coefficient here for b is about 0.68, and for x, it's about the same, right? It's not too far off. Um, I, again, I, I, when I'm more careful, that's actually more accurate. But you get the idea. Uh, so I could use this as a demonstration. I also imagine using it as little mini labs for students, like I give them a video and they do what I just did after they get used to the computer software, if they get used to this website, I let them do their own analysis of, of a video. Um, and the third way I see it happening is I could give students an assignment to go out and make their own videos and analyze their own videos, you know? Uh, if I had a classroom set of maybe five iPads, I could you know, give the students some class time to use those iPads and create a video or let them check them out for the weekend and they could go around and get any video they want and bring that back and analyze the video and see what the relationships are of the motion. I have lots of ideas of videos that I would like to create involving temperature and um, water draining from a cone and if the, at what time does the ball hit the wall and all kinds of ideas of videos that I'd like to make for this. My, uh, as you can see, my library right now is pretty limited, um, but I would like to expand this a whole lot. You can see I've got some up here of different things happening, but I'd like to expand this a whole lot and just create a whole slew of videos that students can uh, use and teachers can use to analyze videos, analyze the motion in videos. And I, I just think that I hope that students, when I give them assignments, could go out and, you know, they'll probably think of things that I've never, thunk, that I've never thought of before, and um, I, I could possibly add their videos to the library, and so it's a kind of an ever-expanding project for me, and I'm pretty excited about it. I think I could use this in a lot of different levels as well. I, I, am, I can imagine using this in an 097 class where, in, where we're investigating linear functions and quadratic functions, and I can imagine using it in a pre-calc class for trig, just like we just did, or 176 with parametric equations. This is perfect for that with the x versus t and y versus t graphs. So I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, I had started this project before you got here with Chris, and back then it was going to be an app. It was going to be something that people download from the app store, but I've given up on apps since then, and I just have created this one just as a website. And so now that it's almost done, I'm, I'm almost ready to roll it out and start creating activities for my 097 classes for uh, next fall. Um, I just wanted to share it with you, show you what I'm doing. I uh, hope you have a good holiday and a good break. And hopefully I'll get to see you in person relatively soon in 2021. Have a good one, Victor. Thanks.